He gets shot, and it's kind of funny because he reacts in a... I don't even know if it's realistic way or not realistic way, but he yells when he gets shot, which I'm, I almost never hear someone make a noise when they get shot in movies. In this movie, he yells like he stubbed his toe. First shot, he's like, ah! Next shot, he's like, ah! <laughs> Welcome to Camp Counselors, a more butter show where we discuss, debate, and inform each other about the best and worst uh, campy movies out there. I am your host, Mr. Gigi, and I am joined by uh, absolutely fucking nobody. I've been abandoned this episode, so claps and chat for that. Really exciting stuff. I was like super excited, like, yo, new Camp Counselors episode recording this week. Ooh, who's it gonna be? So excited. What are we watching, guys, huh? Then I got told, yeah, actually, it's just you, my guy, so enjoy it. Uh, feel free to talk about your life in the beginning. And then, uh, yeah, you watch a movie alone, and you just you just, you just, just take that. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And I was like, yeah, no, that sounds like a lot of fun. I agree. That's I'm surprised you, uh, I haven't jumped on this opportunity uh, beforehand. I'm drinking a Jarritos because uh, I'm l- legally obligated to, so cheers. Mm. But I'm also eating... Uh, some more butter popcorn because I'm legally obligated, so that's fun. Yeah, you can call me a sellout. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> How's my life been going? Uh, really exciting. You know, just been just been recording episodes with the you, you know with my buddies Amanda and Kenny. But uh, other than that, I've been doing absolutely nothing except working on videos and trying to get them out this month. So if you give a damn about that, awesome. If you don't. That's awesome, too. We can just skip that. We don't need to talk about my life. That's not exciting. Let's talk about Vacancy. What is that? Vacancy is the 2007 American horror thriller film directed by a person that I don't want to uh, fuck up their name, but it's inevitable. Nimrod Antal. I maybe actually kind of killed that. I don't know. But if you guys remember... Uh, maybe if you if you show a picture of Luke Wilson's face here, I think you guys will all get it with like a lit up sign of vacancy. I think you'll automatically remember, oh, I saw that at Blockbuster, I think, or something along those lines. And I didn't watch it because I I don't think I've ever watched that movie. I'll be honest. I've seen it. I've seen the cover like I've seen the cover a bunch, but I've never actually watched the movie. So I was really excited to do that. My initial thoughts. <clears throat> um, I'll be honest. Having such a, this, like, cynical, not cynical, being so persnickety in this world of movie reviews where I'm trying to find mistakes to find comedy, right? I'm not here, you know, with the, as a certified Rotten Tomatoes reviewer, I'm here to just find content. So going into movies, I feel kind of bad sometimes because I go into them thinking, oh, I want this to be bad. I kind of want this to suck. I want to find all the things that don't make sense so I can be like, fucking, yeah, get that script writing, baby. That's not always a good thing. So I I will admit, I did not go into this movie with high hopes. Uh, I did take a peek at the Rotten Tomatoes score, which I try not to bank on too much, but I just take it as a very, very, very vague uh, guidance into this. It's 55% on Rotten Tomatoes, 42% audience score, though. That one was juicy, because usually audience is a little bit more uh, lenient than the Rotten Tomatoes reviewers. So that told me that this might actually this might actually suck. So that was exciting. I like Luke Wilson, Owen Wilson's brother. It's very easy to tell in the face and demeanor and voice and every they're the same people, just different hair. And uh, so this movie, essentially, the, the, the premise is that they get into a random motel and then realize that they're being watched. And they're like, oh, shit, this cannot be safe. And then it's not. And then it's basically like the strangers, except in a motel. And then whatever happens from there is, is the movie. There's really not much else to it. It's it, This isn't a super complicated... There's not a lot of layers here, guys. This isn't Possum Part 2. This is Vacancy. This is a fine... This is a very okay movie to put on in the background. This is a very okay movie to put on for your parents. You know, not calling your parents stupid or anything. But uh, 
at least in my life, I know a lot of the older generations, they're not, you know, they're not analyzing these films that they're popping on the background while they're doing whatever the hell, you know, after watching the six o'clock news, they don't have the highest standards for movies. So this is like a fun little thriller to put on the background and be like, whoa, dude's kind of crazy. Peek over every now and then. Maybe you get sucked in for like eight straight minutes and then you're like kind of dumb. Let me get some text back. That's what this is. That's this is perfectly OK for that. So let me let me walk through the movie because I did take a few notes, a few things of interest that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Uh, it immediately begins with this weird like bootleg Max Payne intro. I don't know why I'm saying Max Payne. I feel like I'm disrespecting Max Payne, but the 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 music is very. It's like a groovy, suspenseful, upbeat, almost like. Like a badass coming to murder a bunch of people. Not really a horror movie. Even it, it is thriller. It doesn't matter. So they almost immediately die at the beginning of the movie. Because Luke Wilson. And I feel like I just want to keep calling him that for the rest of the movie. Luke Wilson almost gets into an accident. Because there's a raccoon that runs in the middle of the road. And he doesn't want to run it over. Because he's a good person. Good Samaritan. It's respectable. They don't die. Uh, his wife immediately wakes up. And then you realize. Oh shit. That's Kate Beckinsale, but more importantly, oh shit, she's annoying as fuck and the worst character in this movie, and I actually want her to die in the movie as soon as possible, because uh, she's, she's, I don't use these words, I don't stand by these words, she's an annoying bitch in this movie, once again, apologizing, not my words, he calls her, he calls her a bitch, I'm just, I'm paraphrasing what Luke said, but she's, she's written in as that, right, it's not even offensive what I'm saying, she's written in to be a fucking cunt in this movie as soon as the movie starts because she's asleep as soon as she wakes up she is unbearable to listen to and luke just takes it like a man and gives her little snarky remarks and that's probably one of the most enjoyable parts of this movie not her but luke wilson he is a very very lovely person to play uh, someone who's passive aggressive I think he does an incredible job at that. He's not only convincing, but he's comedic. Quick Haritos break, thank you. They are driving down, who the hell knows where. Luke's pulling the old, I'm a man, I know where, where we are because I have a map. You see this nine foot map that I can open up fully while I'm driving? Of course I know where I'm going, fuck off. Uh, he doesn't know where he's going. They pull over at a gas station that has uh, one of those on-site gas clerks what are they called gas attendants those guys in like the fucking pilgrim villages i don't know and he, and he comes out and he's like okay oh you, oh you almost caught me at the end of my shift i can help you out uh they don't get gas he just checks their car because luke says he hears some noise and he's like yeah no you should be fine it's okay you immediately can tell something's going wrong right there's not a lot of mystery in this movie you just kind of you're just watching something play out and you just want to see how it's going to play out, right? It's, they're not they're not coming in here with this crazy expectation of you, you're here for a ride. You're not. You're not. You're watching a ride. You're watching a roller coaster. You're not on it. That's what this movie is. Uh, the guy, one, one fun part about this interaction is at the end of it, the guy's all happy and cheery. And then he gives a, Luke's wife a sparkler. He's like, yeah, you know, well, when you're at fucking 4th of July gas station, you always get a sparkler to leave. And he's like, oh, the boss makes me say that. Like it's their protocol to do that? To give away sparklers at a gas station? I don't know. It's just, it must not be that much education out there. I'm assuming, I don't know what's happening down there. They're, they're by the fucking mountains in Whoville, so I don't know what to tell you. With that, they start to drive, and wouldn't you know it, the car just breaks down because the guy clearly sabotaged them because he's a terrible person. Uh, they be they bicker more and more. This is the movie. Is them just talking shit to each other for like 20 minutes. They walk back to the gas station to hopefully run into that guy, even though we know that's not possible. But <laughs> and this is one of the fun parts about the movie. He's there at the gas station. He's like, yeah, no, I don't see any lights in there. I don't think he's here anymore. I'm going to go see what's up there. And he walks. And then there's a motel like 10 feet like a rock's throwing distance away from the gas station which was never mentioned no one talked about it instead of being like hey let's go to the motel and stay there until we can you know take care of this car they're like let's go look at the fucking abandoned gas station 
Inst- I don't know. It's one of those things. It's one of those things. Just one of the. That's the persnickety brain I was telling you about, where you're like, that's fucking stupid, Luke, but I like you, so we'll, we'll, we'll let it pass. They go in, they meet the motel owner, and they hear a woman, a woman screaming, crying at the top of her lungs, like she's getting murdered. I mean, if you play this sound for anybody, they will instantly think, whoa, someone is definitely dying. They. Well, at, surprisingly, Amy gets that vibe, and she's like, we should probably leave. Meanwhile, my boy Luke is like, no, no, come on. And his little Owen Wilson voice, he's like, no, come on, let's check it out. Let's, let's do this. No, and he starts ringing the fucking bell like, can I get some service, please? Yeah, come on. Can you, can you take a break from the fucking autopsy you're doing back there? I, I would love a room. Am I taking too long in describing this story? I feel like I'm walking you too slow. We can skip. We can totally skip around. I, I I know I don't need to do this, right? I, I'm, I'm maybe holding your hand a little bit too much. It's fine. We'll skip ahead. Motel owner is kind of a douchebag, or more of a dirtbag, excuse me. But he's a cool guy. I like his character in the movie. He's, uh, he, he's, he, he's, he's funny in a weird way. Once they're in the room, they start hearing these loud bangs and start to realize something's wrong, especially when they find the tapes that were purposely left there, which are basically snuff films. Once he sees the snuff films and realizes, well, this is the same room... That this, that this film is set in, he goes to check, he sees two hidden DSLRs, because those are so fucking stealthy, and he's like, oh man, they're watching us in this same exact room. They do not run for at least a minute straight while taking all of this in. They just keep watching the snuff film like they can't turn away. And then, obviously, you know, this is where the fun begins. They've lost their chance. They're pretty much boned, right? Now, how did those, how did those break? Excuse me. This podcast is sponsored by Jarritos. Yes, that's right, the delicious Jarritos, which has 12 flavors, including strawberry mango, tamarind, mandarin, Jamaica, 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 grapefruit, lime, Mexican cola, and more. My favorite flavor is tamarind. That's why it's front and center right over here. It comes in a glass bottle, no HFCS, all natural flavors made with real sugar. So get the Jarritos Fiesta Packs at Walmart to try every flavor. Link is in the description. And thank you, Jarritos, for sponsoring this podcast. This is going to be one of those movies where you have to watch it with the expectation of nothing. You cannot go in there expecting logic from the 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 mountainside mobsters trying to get into the room to murder them. You just can't. Because if you focus too much on that, you're going to miss all the fun. They, they mess with them. They mess with them a bunch. They do a bunch of silly things. It's almost like they're fucking stupid as hell, but then sometimes they're just nine steps ahead of them for whatever reason. It's those movies. You know the type of movie I'm talking about. You don't even need to watch it. You know what to expect. I don't know how many carbon copies there were of this back in 2007, but I imagine it's not exactly fucking mr original over here but th this is what it is so i i don't know how much i want to sit here and pick apart every silly little thing that the what i call mountainside mobsters do but uh l let's talk about this there is uh there is one of the mobsters i'm not, i don't know if i should keep calling him that one of the guys one of the villains he's he's like a gym rat because as soon as you see him he starts running towards them, Usain Bolt speeds. There's this, they discover this underground tunnel in the hotel where they can maneuver to other rooms because that's the way they built it. That's how they sneak in people's rooms and murder them, right? So at one point in the movie, the motel owner sends his goons to the underground tunnel. And one of the guys is just, I, I hope you guys can find a clip of this. One of the guys is just, you realize he's fucking half hamster. Like he was the guy who, tried to max out the pacer test in high school constantly. He's super over the top for no reason. It's never addressed. They're never like, yeah, that's Lenny. He fucking does steroids and takes a lot of creatine. Like, no one ever said... There's no background to these guys. It's just one of them is fucking He-Man for no reason. I'm not even exaggerating. There are so many parts in the movie where they're in a pickle, and he's trying to attack Luke and Amy, and for whatever reason... He's getting very close to doing so. He's like trying to lift up a hatch while there's an entire fucking counter sat over it 
and Luke and Amy are also pushing it down. And he's pushing the hatch. He's trying to raise the roof and somehow getting, like, room to do so. Uh, oh, they pull the whole bringing a cop over because they somehow get through to 911. So a cop shows up and you know how this plays out. I don't, there's no spoil in here. Uh, sorry for not warning you of spoilers at all. Uh, 2007, hopefully you caught up by now. For, for these random checkups in movies, you know they never send out fucking Seagal to go check it out. It's always, you know, 53-year-old Dan who's, you know, he's in his last year right before retirement. They're like, yeah, you go check that shit out. He shows up and they actually meet up. Surprisingly, Dan meets up with David and Amy, Luke, and they get in his car and Dan's armed because he's a fucking police officer. They're in a vehicle, but of course they sabotage the vehicle at some random point. Instead of just murdering the cop, they just love to fucking toy with him. But even that, I feel like, could have been their downfall because they let them gather together to begin with. Keep in mind, officer has a firearm. As soon as they get in the car, there's just like tw what I think is like a 12 foot shotgun in the frame right in front of Luke and he doesn't reach for it. I think I'm mistaken. I have to be because it's not even acknowledged. It has to be like a baton or I don't know what the fuck it is, but it's right in front leaning against uh, leaning against uh, the glove compartment. It looks like a shotgun. Smells like a shotgun. Should be a fucking shotgun. He could have easily taken that shotgun. Fucking uh, 90 year old Dan. Give the taser to Amy. Everybody's armed. And then you have a nice little Mexican standoff. Because I think the only person with a gun is the motel owner. Those two Grim Reaper dudes don't have weapons as far as I've seen. The only weapon is fucking Hulk. So, but you could take them down with some bullets. But that doesn't happen, of course. Uh, as soon as they realize that the vehicle sabotaged, Officer Dan gets out of the car and he says, stay here. All right, Dan, this sounds this sounds positive. Luke and Amy just take this as yeah. No, of course. No, you're, you're the police officer. Let's listen to you. It's not like we don't realize how dangerous and maniacal and like fucking calculated these guys are by now after our multiple chances or uh, multiple attempts at an escape. Whatever. That's fine. He goes to lift the hood. And he's like, damn it. Just as I thought. It doesn't start. <laughs> you fucking genius. You, you a part-time mechanic too, my guy? That's crazy. Drops the hood. Big guys behind him uh, get stabbed. And they just, they just run out of the police car uh, back to the room that they've been in. So. Time passes. This movie seems... This movie doesn't seem short, necessarily. But it seems like it should be short. I don't know. I, I can't. I'm almost shocked it's this long. I think it's it's only an hour 25, which isn't long, but it seems too long for me not remembering fucking anything from this. And I took notes. Luke figures everything out in the hotel for whatever reason, and he realizes there's also a hatch into a little attic crawl space type thing uh, in, in the top of the room. So he goes up there and he says, all right. You are going to go up there. I'm going to break the window in the back. I'm going to take a little scrap of your clothing, put it on the glass, make them think that you ran out that way because they definitely remember what you wore. And I'm going to go out the front, go to the motel owner's office and get a gun because he has two guns hung up. He took one of them already, but there's still one there because the plot needs to move forward. Luke opens the door and as, as soon as he opens it, he gets stabbed. Which is basically what should have happened like 43 minutes ago if we really want to take this logically. Just as soon as he's out there, tackled, stabbed, just like in all the snuff films, he did not learn his lesson. Amy does not get discovered, which is the good news. So she decides, this is terrible. I can't believe my husband that I was divorcing is dead. This is just awful. I'm gonna take a nap. And she takes a nap. And uh, daylight comes up. This is just a weird part in the movie where you're like, what's, ha what's happening right now? Is the movie over? Is it almost over? This feels like too, too refreshing of a break 
for something else to happen. But she wakes up in the morning, decides this is probably a good time to leave, crawls out, sees Luke's body still there, starts to crawl over and decides, you know, I should take some time to mourn. This feels disrespectful if I just run away and save myself, which is essentially what he wanted this to be. He wanted me to, you know, not die, but that's fine. And for whatever reason, the guys are still there. So she starts to run. She finds a random vehicle. She jimmies, jimmies the vehicle. And here comes fucking Goldberg, 90 miles per hour. He parkours the car, comes over, busts in the sunroof, and he's just dangling there. So she just guns it, blindly doesn't see anything because he's just fucking slap fighting with her. And she guns it into the other guy, the Grim Reaper, who for some reason is coming out of another room. That is not the room she came out of, which doesn't make any sense because I'm pretty sure he's the guy that initially saw her, so that doesn't fucking connect. Follow me here. My only explanation for that, because he would have no reason to go into another room. He would just chase her. <laughs> My only explanation for that is that he can't come out the same room because what happens next is she fucking just guns it straight into that guy, pins him through the uh pins, pins him through the door, the wall, right into the other wall, fucking murders him, right? If she did that to the room they were in, uh, she's running over Luke as well. And he would just be fucking smeared. I'm talking road bump. It'd probably be even more gruesome. It would have been a lot of fun, but they chose not to do that because... Because Luke's not dead, but he's just taking a nap too, you know? Even though he got stabbed and he's been bleeding out overnight. I don't know how cold it is out there. But, uh, yeah, we believe in happy endings. So, she kills both of them. She kills Goldberg and the other guy who ends up being the gas station attendant that she saw with the sparkler. I don't know what the point of that reveal is. I think we knew he was in on it. I think it would have been more cool to maybe explore the idea that she's in a town where everyone's against her. And that would have been more of a real, like, ooh, heartbeat ending. But they didn't do that, so it's almost like she just wiped the town, I guess. But they're still the motel owner, right? She survives a car crash. They do not. Now it's just mano a mano with the motel owner. They get into a scuffle because she's trying to get the other gun. And after... It, I wonder why he doesn't kill her at this point. Because he knows what she did. But then the whole reason why they're able to say, well, he's not going to just shoot her, is because he wants to get the camera and record her last moments of agony, I guess, because that's that's what he does. He records these snuff films, and he's like, this is juicy shit. This is what they pay for, baby. That's what he tries to do until he gets kicked in the nuts, the classic. If nothing else works, they're on their last legs. Nice kick in the nuts. Fucking just swaps the, swaps the power in the battle ASAP. They run out. She gets the other gun, and before he can pull out his gun to shoot... He gets shot, and it's kind of funny because he reacts in a... I don't even know if it's realistic way or not realistic way, but he yells when he gets shot, which I'm, I almost never hear someone make a noise when they get shot in movies. It's just more like they shut up, like they're talking, then it's like, uh, uh, and that's it. Uh, Discord, stop. In this movie, he yells like he stubbed his toe. First shot, he's like, ah! Next shot, he's like, ah! <laughs> and the third shot, he finally goes down. So, he's dead. And, uh, yeah, this is the, like I said, in, in a very vacancy turn of events, David, Luke, he's still alive. No one went to go check up on the police officer who never responded to that call. Like, they didn't do a thing where they pretended to be the officer on the walkie and they're like, oh, fucking, uh, the, uh, 2319, don't worry, everything's good over here. They don't do that, so... They usually should check back in with the cop. At least that's what happens in movies. I'm going to mute that. But no one went to go check up on him. So there wasn't another officer sent. There wasn't immediately fucking a swarm of policemen to that location. And uh, also, in a very vacancy turn of events, she goes over to David's body. And while she's there, the Max Payne music starts to play again. Fucking credits, baby. Vacancy across the board. You gotta love it. That's it. That's the end of the movie. There is no closure whatsoever. There's no... They, they had this whole plot line of them having this problem in their... What I think is them getting divorced, but 
they fucking hate each other, right? But then they started loving each other again. I love you, kissing each other. There's no closure on that whatsoever. I think they think they did that. No, you did not. I would love to see at least what they do in every movie where the cops show up at that exact moment just to know, well, what happened here, ma'am? And she's like, go look at the tapes. Ah, ah, ah. And then, but there's nothing. It just cuts right there. A very abrupt vacancy. Can you believe it? Bang! Just like that. And that's the movie. And like I said, it's just, just a fucking movie. I don't know what else to tell you. Vacancy, if I have to rate it from 1 to 10. 1 being a burning tent on fire. 10 being delicious, yummy marshmallow put with some Hershey's chocolate and graham crackers. So fucking good. I'm giving it a fucking... It's getting a 5 from me, baby. There are some, some redeeming factors to this, like, because it can be that fun, random, just TV movie that comes on for a little bit. There are moments that I enjoy, but not enough to fucking name them off right now and be like, hey, these specific eight seconds, crazy. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm just going to tell you what this movie is. Uh, this, is this is what it is. I got some, I have extra information here, but I don't even know if that really goes hand in hand with what I'm, hold on. Kate Beckinsale had a difficult time working on the film with Luke Wilson, who often showed up hungover, late, and unprepared. That's fucking hilarious. I'm still on Luke's side because he was written in as Luke Wilson, and when you're written in as Luke Wilson, everything is going to go A-OK. -okay. So, that is my rating. I stand by Luke's alcoholism. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for watching Camp Counselors, the solo episode. Make sure to follow us on our YouTube channel and Spotify. You can follow us on Twitter too, where you can find breaking news, clips, memes, and more on everything film, TV, pop culture, and also uh, Instagram, TikTok, fucking everything. Go to everything. The link should be down there to help you out. Get yourself some jarritos because why would you not? And thank you so much for listening to the Camp Counselors podcast. You can find me everywhere, Mr. GG on YouTube. Uh, don't forget to, dare I say it, butter your popcorn. Everybody have a good Monday. Thank you.